Chapter 14 Transportation, Communication and Trade Introduction The movement of people and goods from one place to another is called transportation. In general terms, the process of going from one place to another is known as transportation. The transportation has an important contribution in economic and physical progress. Due to transportation, the exchange of goods and people is made possible. Distant places can be linked through transportation. National integration and processes like industrialization and urbanization are made possible due to transportation. Earlier, there was less interaction among people in comparison with today. Now, people make use of communication equipment more and more for exchanging messages. Mails, telephones, cell or mobile phones and internet services are being used very widely. India has launched satellites for space research. This has improved the telecommunication services very much. Trade is the tertiary economic activity. Trade encourages production activity. No country can ever be self-reliant totally. So, it has to make exchanges with other countries. Example, the agro-products of India are sent to Middle Eastern countries and we import date, palms and mineral oil from them. Transportation Earlier, man used to live a wanderer's life. But after the invention of agriculture, he started living a steady life. Earlier, he used to carry his things himself. In due course, he started using animals as beasts of burden with the activities of agriculture and animal husbandry. In modern period, Auto vehicles are used more than animals in transportation. The types of transportation are affected by factors like location, climate, relief, human population, etc. Moreover, some cultural factors like technical development, economic development, market and capital investments, political decisions, etc. also affect the transportation. Transportation is carried out by roads and railways in plain region. In mountainous regions, animals and man are used. Yak in the interim places in Himalayas for transportation of goods. During ascent to Everest, Bhotia people, who are better mountaineers also, work as laborers to carry goods. Besides, elephants, mules and horses are used in the mountainous forests. Camel is best for transportation in desert. You might have seen a woodcutter carrying wood on his head. On railway stations, the coolies are also seen carrying luggage on their head. Ship or a small boat is used as transport vehicle near the sea coast or where the river is fairly deep and is perennial. Roads or Land Transportation Roads were important in transportation since ancient times. There was a road network of highways during the rules of Samrat Ashok and Chandragupta Maurya. 
roads are complementary to the railways, sea routes and air routes. Most important characteristics of roads are the widespread field of its services, safety of goods, saving of time and cheap and multi-services. The only option to connect goods, man and the area is roads. The road system of India is third largest in the world after United States of America and China. Things to know Roadways form about 83%, railways 9%, airways 6% and waterways form about 2% of the total national transportation system. Classification of Indian Roadways 1. National Highway 2. State Highway 3. District Roads 4. Village or Approach Roads 5. Border Roads National Highway Highways are important not only from economic development point of view but also from the safety point. The responsibility of the construction of these highways rests with the central government. The state capitals, large industrial and commercial cities and major ports are interconnected by these highways. These roads also connect India with neighboring countries like Myanmar, Pakistan, Nepal, Bhutan and China. National Highway No. 7 is the longest highway of the country and it extends between Varanasi with Kanyakumari. Four metro cities, Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai and Kolkata will be interlinked by Golden Quadrilateral Highway System. National Highway No. 27, 41 47, 141, 147, etc. pass through Gujarat. These numbers are changed by the Government of India in 2011. Considering from total view of population, Chandigarh, Puducherry, Delhi, Goa states have more number of national highways. Next come the states of Mizoram, Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, Manipur, etc. The total length of national highways is less in those states like Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Maharashtra and Gujarat where there is more population. State Highway State highways are important for trade and industries. These roads are connected to all districts and the national highways. The responsibility of construction and maintenance of these roads lies with the state governments. District Roads These roads connect villages and the main cities with the district headquarters and the headquarters of talukas and districts. Earlier, these were all unmetalled roads, but now most of them are converted into metalled roads. These are maintained by district panchayats. Village roads. The construction and the maintenance of these roads is done by Gram Panchayat. These roads which connect the roads passing by the villages are unmetalled and so these are not useful in rainy season. Under Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana, attempts are made to improve the village transportation. Under the scheme, a large-scale work is undertaken to convert these roads into metalled roads. Border Road Border Road Organization was established in 1960. 
This organization constructs roads in the border area for the defense of the country and for protection. It undertakes work like construction of roads in inaccessible remote areas and its maintenance to clear snow, etc. Expressways Expressways are also called Drutagati Marg. Vehicles can be driven without any obstruction on these highways of four or six lanes. Over bridges are constructed along these highways wherever there is a railway crossing or a crossroad. Ahmedabad Vadodara Express Highway in Gujarat is an example of this. A toll tax has to be paid for using this highway. Roads have been constructed connecting all major ports of the nation. Traffic problem. Overbridges, bypass roads and ring roads around the cities are constructed to avoid the traffic problem in larger cities. However, the traffic problems go astray in metropolitan cities due to the increase in vehicles. The urban roads cannot be widened compared to the increasing population and increasing number of vehicles. With increasing encroachments along the roads, traffic jam scenes have become very common during peak hours in cities. Traffic jam is also caused due to marriage processions, social processions and other processions. In cities like Delhi, the traffic jam does not get cleared for many hours. So those going for important work, passengers heading towards the railway station and patients needing immediate treatment unable to reach hospitals are put to inconvenience. Some suggestions to remove traffic problems. If you are a student and if you do not have a driving license, do not drive a vehicle. You can contribute this way in solving traffic problems. Do not overtake unless it is absolutely necessary. Two-wheeler like cycle, scooter, etc. should be driven only on the left side of the road. Do not talk into cell phones or mobiles while driving. If it is inevitable, show the sides, stop the vehicle on the left side of the road and then only talk into the cell phone. Allow the vehicles 108, ambulance and fire brigade to pass first. Do not create noise by unnecessary honking. Follow the traffic signals. Walk down to nearby places or use a cycle. At night, use dipper only if it is absolutely necessary. Railway Indian Railways is the largest national institution. Indian Railways is the main medium of transportation to cooperate in the economic fields of India, such as agriculture, industries, trade, service, etc. It has a major contribution in national security, peace, management, to establish cultural and geographical unity and to maintain it. India ranks first in Asia and second in world in railways. Progress of Railways First railway in India started in 1853 between Mumbai and Thane. There are three types of railways in India. These are broad gauge, meter gauge and narrow gauge. The meter gauge and narrow gauge railway tracks are being converted into broad gauge in recent times. This is a big achievement for Indian railways. Due to different gauges, lot of time was wasted in travelling and transporting passenger goods. So much money was wasted. Railway network is more dirt in the states which have plain region, 
dense population, industrial development, intensive agriculture, and have rich mineral fields. Large cities like Kolkata, Delhi, Jaipur have metro rails also. Work has started on the metro rail project between Ahmedabad and Gandhinagar. Monorail has proved very important to connect Mumbai with its suburbs. Railway is useful for the transfer of passengers and material goods. Besides, it is also useful for the speedy transfer of food grains and forage during drought. From defence point of view also, it is useful for transferring soldiers and weapons. Konkan Railways has provided a good example by laying down railway tracks through tunnels in the mountainous regions which were highly inaccessible. Indian Railways is considered to be excellent for time, safety and facilities and is being modernized very fast. The route between Dibrugad and Kanyakumari is the longest railway route in India, which is known as Vivek Express. In Gujarat, Ahmedabad is the biggest railway station. Other important railway junctions are Mahsana, Viramgam, Rajkot, Vadodara, Surat, Anand, etc. Waterway Water transportation was carried out in India since ancient times. All transactions were done through waterways when roads and railways did not exist. Compared to roads and railways, the waterways are cheaper because no expense is incurred in their construction or maintenance. There are two types of waterways in India. Internal waterways, oceanic waterways. Internal waterways, internal water transportation services are developed more in Assam, West Bengal and Bihar states of Northeast India, while in South India also, internal waterways are used more for services. Transportation by River Canal West Bengal, Assam, Tamil Nadu and Bihar are important states as river waterways. Steamers and large boats use these permanent waterways. To maintain the internal water transportation, the government has recognized the following waterways as national waterways. National Waterway 1, Ganga River, Haldia, Allahabad, 1620 km. National Waterway 2, Brahmaputra River, Dhubri, Sadia, 891 kilometers. National Waterway 3, West Coast Canal, Kollam, Kotapuram, 250 kilometers. National Waterway 4, Godavari Krishna River, Kakinada, Puducherry, 1078 kilometers. National Waterway 5, Brahmani River, Goenkali, Talcher. 588 kilometers. Oceanic Waterway India has about 7,516 kilometer long coastline. Along this coastline, there are 13 major and about 200 minor ports. After Shipping Corporation of India was founded, there has been much development of national and international waterways. Kandla, Mumbai, Navasheva, Margao, New Mangalore and Kochi ports are located on the western coast while Kolkata, Haldia, Paradweep, Vishakhapatnam, Chennai, Tutikorin etc. are main ports of eastern coast. Gujarat has got a long coastline of about 1,600 kilometers. Kandla is the largest port of Gujarat. Bhavnagar is the only port having automatic lock gate system. 
Porbandar is a free port for the entire year. Other important ports are Viraval, Sikka, Pipavav, Navlakhi, Mundra, Poshitra, Okha and Hajira. A project is undertaken to develop Poshitra port. Airways It is the speediest and costliest mode among all types of transportation. Airways are used to reach distant places, remote and dense forests and to reach those places which are not accessible easily by road. In India, the weather remains favourable for aviation almost throughout the year. In present day, airways are used more and more. The airway services in India were as airmail services between Allahabad and Naini. It was run by a private company. Today, Air India and other private companies provide air transportation services. Today, Airport Authority of India carries out the management of 127 airports, which include 15 international, 87 domestic, 25 civilian airport terminals. There are international airports such as Kolkata, Mumbai, Chennai, New Delhi, Bengaluru, Hyderabad, Ahmedabad, etc. Pawan Hans Helicopters provides helicopter services to ONGC and to the government. Other means of transportation Pipelines are used to transport liquid material such as water, mineral oil, natural gas and other liquids. An oil pipeline exists between Naharkatia of Assam to Nunmati Barauni. One pipeline goes from Kalol to Koyali in Gujarat and from Salaya to Mathura. A pipeline has been installed from Bombay High up to Mumbai coast. In Gujarat, natural gas is transported through pipeline to Khambhat, Dhuvaran, Koyali, Ahmedabad. Cooking gas is provided through pipelines to Surat, Baruch, Vadodara, Ahmedabad, Jamnagar, Morbi, Rajkot, Gandhinagar cities. Ropeway In mountainous regions, the summits are connected by ropeway to transport goods and passengers. There are about 100 ropeways in India. Ropeways are seen in Darjeeling, Kulu Manali, Cherapunji, Haridwar, etc. in North India and in the mountainous regions of Chennai and Malai. The ropeway services in Gujarat are available at Pawagad, Saputara and Ambaji. Work for a ropeway has started at Girnar in Junagar. Communication. The arrangement to send or to collect information from one place to another is called communication. The communication system has proved extremely useful in routine life for relief and rescue works at the time of natural hazards like flood, drought, cyclone, tsunami. The communication system plays an important role in the economic, social and cultural progress and for maintaining national integration and unity. In ancient times, messages were sent by playing the dhol or drum, by smoke, by pigeons and through other animals. In modern communication, mail services, telegraph, telephone, mobile telephone, smartphone and satellites 
have made the communication very speedy and easy. Science and technology have contributed very much in developing the field of communication. Today we can see all important events live. Communication can be divided into two parts. One, individual communication system. Two, mass communication system. Individual communication system. Internet and smartphones are the effective among individual communication system. Email, e-commerce, exchange of currency, etc. have become very fast due to internet. Moreover, there has been a revolution in telecommunication through various applications on social media. Villagers also remain in live contact with people locally and in abroad. Mass communication system There are two mediums in mass communication system. One, print media, which includes newspapers, magazines, pamphlets. Two, electronic media, which includes Akashwani and Doordarshan. Prasar Bharti is the autonomous body for transmissions in the country. Its two divisions are Akashwani and Doordarshan. There are 415 radio stations in the country today. It broadcasts programs in 23 languages. It can be used conveniently in the most remote area also. It becomes an important unit for contacts at the time of natural disasters. With use of satellites, Doordarshan news, weather reports, and programs on entertainment and education are also telecast. Today, many private channels have also started programs like Doordarshan. Satellite Communications Artificial satellites have their own communication skills. But along with that, it also controls other mediums of communication. The Indian National Satellite, or INSAT, satellites launched by India are multi-purpose system which is helpful to Doordarshan for the forecast of weather, cyclone and thunderstorms, warning for disasters, research and other telecasts. Besides, there has been a development of indigenous polar satellite launch vehicle, PSLB, through the Indian Remote Sensing Satellites, IRS. Trade India is a vast country. At some places, there are mountainous regions, coastal plains, and deserts. Same type of diversity is seen in climate, vegetation, mineral resources and energy resources. There are different crops in every region and also the difference in industrial output. As a result, there are two types of trade systems in the country. One, internal trade and two, international trade. Internal trade the commodities available in excessive quantity of one state is transported to another state and vice versa. This is known as internal trade. For example, Punjab produces more wheat, so it exports it to other states. But Punjab does not have a sea coast, so it gets salt from Gujarat. 
Thus, every state exports its products. The internal trade has developed in India due to this. International trade the system in which different countries of the world export and import their requirements can be called international trade. It is necessary to maintain trade balance in international trade, otherwise there would be a negative trade balance. If a country exports more than its imports, its trade balance is positive. This increases the reserves of foreign exchange of our country. If the imports exceed the exports, then the trade balance is negative. The currency value of that country which increases its export increases in international market and the currency value decreases in the international markets of those countries which increase their imports. After the liberalization policy of 1991, there have been many changes in the international trade of India. In last few years, the trade balance of India is mostly negative. In order to make this trade balance positive, the government has started Make in India. Due to this, many foreign companies will produce their goods in India and will export them to foreign countries. Now, we shall study the export-import trade of India. Import trade of India. When the iron production in India is not sufficient, India imports iron and copper. The demand for petroleum, mineral oil and lubricants is more for transportation and for keeping the machines active. These are imported. We also import machines, pearls and gemstones and edible oils as per our requirements. We import these things from USA, Germany, Russia, Myanmar, Iran, etc. Export trade of India Only a limited portion of the production is allowed to be exported so that its cost may not increase within the country. We import raw materials for few things, manufacture some goods from them and then export them. Indian export includes iron ore and minerals, engineering goods such as cycle, fans, sewing machines, cars, railway coaches, computer software, etc. We also export chemicals and the things related to them, gemstones, hide and leather goods, cotton textile, fish and its products, handicrafts, tea coffee, jute and its products, and ready-made clothes.